Jackson gives you guys, I think it was 16 points there in the second half. Just, I know we talked a lot about him the other day, but what can you say about him at this point? Made some big shots, which, you know, the turning point in the game there at the 15 minute mark, we're down five. And then at the 11 minute mark, we're, we're up five. And I think we had like a 12-2 run there or something, but our defense picked up. Uh, Jackson hit a couple shots there and, and the game just flipped. You know, and um, thought that four or five minute stretch was probably the difference in the game after we had really played poorly again the first five minutes of the second half. Uh, poor turnovers and just bad decisions. Uh, didn't give ourselves a chance on the offensive end, which led to some easy baskets for them. So, um, but again, that four minute stretch there from 15 to 11. Um, you know, the game really flipped there, and Jackson offense was a big, big part of that. What's the significance for you guys for, of this win of opening 2-0? What are you guys taking away from this? Well, you, you got to win at home, you know, if if you're going to be involved. And, you know, <clears throat> UCLA's played a tremendous schedule with the exception of the Northridge game. I mean, they lose a two-pointer to Marquette that's rated. They lose a four-pointer to Gonzaga, who's rated. They, they go on the road to Villanova, who's <laughs> no fun to play. Uh, they play Ohio State. You know, we saw Ohio State down in Florida. You know, their physicality would have, at that point in the season, we wouldn't have been able to play with them. So, you know, their losses um, have been really, you know, to good teams. Maryland's playing really good. So we knew it was going to be a fight. And, um, you know, they got the win over to Oregon State, so got a little – mojo going again so you know we just we needed to compete you know we were hoping to get the score in the 70s you know get a little faster pace game uh, they like to play a little slower pace we wanted a little faster pace on the offensive end we didn't get really get our transition game going although 17 to 7 on fast break points you know i thought was a big but and then second chance we at least we were down 7-0 at half um, and uh, we got nine offensive rebounds second half which just at least gave us some more energy. And uh, uh, we didn't get as many points out of them as I'd like, but we at least had some more energy because of those offensive rebounds. They had all the energy in the first half with their second chance. It was seven to nothing, second chance points in the first half. And on a one, two possession game, second chance points, a six to four in the second half, you know, it was a big change. After Kwame picked up that third foul there, you guys go five guards for the rest of the first half, just how do you think you guys fared there, especially Bam kind of get in there as a kind of de facto five? Yeah, we, uh, Big Mo had two, and I didn't want to get them both with three. Uh, so we wanted to try to get, you know, to the halftime with, you know, with what we had. And um, so the guys did a good job. You know, we were flying around pretty good. I said, fellas, we got to use our quickness as much as we can here. They got the size advantage. We got to use some quickness. Um, and I thought we flew around a lot better there uh, to give ourselves an opportunity. Hey, Coach, UCLA's leading scorer in the season, Sebastian Mack, was held to six points on three base shooting, and that's coming after your performance against USC, where Buddy Ellis was held to four or 15 shooting. How have you been able to contain like the high level scores on opposing teams? Well, I thought our awareness on him was pretty good. Uh, he's really good at getting to the rim. I mean, he's had 91 of his shots right at the rim. I mean, he he's a tremendous driver. So. Uh, we said if, if he hits some threes, if he hits some jumpers on us, we'll have to live with it. But we just can't let him get to the rim and like he wants to because uh, he's really good at it. And I uh, thought our guys did a pretty good job. I thought Mo helped out a little bit a couple times, KJ a couple times that kind of threw him off his rhythm. But he is a really good athlete, a really good player, can get to the hole. Um, you know, I thought that was a big key. We just, we had a hard time staying with their four and five, man. You look at Bonahat was six for seven and, and uh, the big freshman from Turkey, I don't know how to pronounce his name, so I won't try, but he was five for seven. So those two guys really, really gave us a lot of trouble inside. Three-pointers were a big difference in the ball game. How were you able to alter shots or alter looks, uh, especially out of the zone? Well, uh, you know, we, we shot 40%, which was huge. You know, Jackson with that little string there, you know, of hitting three was, was huge for us. But, um, you know, our activity, they're not a great three-point shooting team. 
So we wanted to try to play inside out, take Bonna out of it a little bit. Uh, he hurt us last year as a freshman, and you know, we knew how good he was, how athletic, and how many, how would he block how many shots? Five. He did a great job protecting the hole for them. Um, you know, so we wanted to play inside out, uh, get after their shooters. You know, the guy we were really uh, worried about was Lazar, uh, you know, and he went 0 for 6. So that that was probably the, the biggest thing. He had that one wide open one uh, when they were coming back there uh, across from their bench. And I just like, dang, we can't give him that shot. Fortunately, he left it short. But um, he was the one guy that – and. Uh, McLennan had a, came into the game uh, shooting 42 percent, you know, so we had to be concerned about him. But the rest of the guys, we wanted to play them inside out, you know, and, and take away their driving lanes. And we did some good things there. You know, uh, they shot 42 percent overall, you know, and when you could take out the two bigs, six for seven and five for seven, you know, the perimeter guys did a tremendous job and uh, 15 percent from three didn't follow a lot. You know, there wasn't many fouls called in the second half. Um, but it uh, was one of those games where, you know, we just found a way and Jackson hit those two big free throws there late to, you know, give us that cushion because uh, we were getting ready to foul if if he missed that first one. And, and uh, so, but fortunately he hit them both and, and the pressure was off. What did you make of that sequence right before that possession where you break the press and Jackson lobs it up and, and Kwame dunks it. What's, what's your guys' rule on if he should dunk it, take it, draw the foul? Were you okay with that sequence? Well, you kind of got to let him play. I'd liked a little cleaner look than the one he got. I mean, I've got to be honest with the one-point lead. I, you know, We always talk about breakaways. Obviously, if you got a breakaway, take it. So uh, the foul, you know, we don't have to hit the free throws. But that wasn't exactly a breakaway. But uh, they figured it out. Jacks made a nice pass, and, and KJ finished it. So uh, I was nervous. I got to admit, that's a 50-50 play at best. I'd rather, you know, as hard as the shot was, I'd have probably rather seen Jackson dribble it out, make him foul him. But uh, KJ did finish it. What do you make of Jermaine's game today? Obviously, had a tough night shooting the other day, but scored 15, really good floor game. Came oh, out I of the bucket. Good. I, I thought he played good. I. You know, defensively, he gives us a purpose. He's a good defender. Uh, now, I he he, he kind of gives us a personality. You know, the freshmen are kind of following him. You know how hard he plays and that. Um, so no, I uh, I think Jermaine now with without Dante out there, you know, Jermaine's the one guy with experience that that gives us a personality, and uh, you know, guys are starting to follow him a little bit. But you don't come out as a freshman and know how to handle yourself or act. And, and Jermaine's trying to give him some leadership. And so, uh, no, I've been, I've been really pleased with him. I, I think he's done a good job. It seems like this game was a little bit rougher than your guys' last game. Just how do you think the team, especially the freshmen, kind of responded to that when it was tough? No, they, they, they try to muddle it up. You know, they're very athletic, uh, big, physical. You know, so they try to beat you up. You know, that's, you know, you look at all their scores. They're one of the best defensive teams in the country because they just, they really pack it in there and they make you, you know, it was, it was physical. Uh, you know, I personally, you know, I was just worried about all the hands they were using. I, you know, I, I, I don't mind physical defense, but I just thought they were using their hands a little bit. And, and so I complained about that a little bit because, you know, playing hard-nosed defense, one thing, but, you know, freedom of movement, you know, is, is, is a big rule. You know, so, but no, uh, Mick, Mick does that. That's, that's why they've been good. You know, they, they, you know, they're physical. They beat you up, you know, and uh, they got the bodies to do it. You know, they're deep and they're big and those guards are athletic. So that's their style. And, uh, you know, that's kind of always been his style at Cincinnati and, and uh, you know, the, the good years that he's had at UCLA. Uh, they want to be, you know, a team that beats you up a little bit and beats you on the boards. And, and uh, so you, you've got to be ready for that. And uh, with the exception of last year, they were just they were probably just better than us last year. They got us three times. But our guys, you know, the previous years had adjusted pretty good. And, and we tried to prepare them for what was coming tonight. 
you know, that it was, was going to be a different game, just the way they play. They, they don't want to run. You know, they want to make it a half-court fight. And uh, so you kind of got to get ready for that. Last question. Telecast was saying that Infoli and Nate could be back in the net, you know, sometime in January. Is that accurate? I hope. They, I hope. Uh, you know, I they they've been working. Uh, Nate's uh, doctor's report came out great when they took the cast off, which was a surprise to all of us. And uh, so he's moving a little quicker. So we're hoping that that he might be ready. Uh, Dante keeps working out. Um, you know, so. We're hoping that, you know, they're, they're ready to go. Um, obviously, it'd be a big boost. Uh, but, you know, the guys are playing hard. We just got to keep them playing hard till hopefully we get some reinforcements. Mookie's working out too. So if we just get any of the, any of the three, you know, uh, Mookie's athleticism. Uh, but those guys have been also out for five weeks. You know, so the conditioning factor, um, even if they were to come back, you know, it'd be in such a limited role for two or three weeks just because, you know, they Dante obviously hasn't been running with his knee. Uh, Nate could have been running with his cast, but he, he said it kind of the balance wasn't good. So he didn't run much. But uh, uh, no, we just hope to get somebody back because the guys are playing hard and and. Um, you know, I, like I said, I can't fault their effort. I, I thought we played hard. Uh, I'd have been really disappointed if we'd have lost because we had some really inefficient, just didn't run our stuff. Uh, they're late and just uh, mental mistakes that we made. I'd have been really disappointed with that. But uh, guys found a way. So it's a big part of any, any season, just finding a way. So thanks.